contributed to the possibility of countless lives after you, lives that you would never see, lives that we are all a part of today. And it's worth thinking that maybe the meaning of our lives are actually not even within the scope of our understanding, because it's true of every one of these organisms, and it may also be true of us. Last story of connection is the story of the mind. And this is not our minds are all connected in some psychic way or some scientifically unexplainable way. Um, I'm gonna explain the connection of the mind through the simple story of this instrument. This is a piano, and I have actually a good relationship with pianos. Uh, thanks, Mom. She gave me piano lessons very early. <laughs> I think you have to if you're Asian. But a, be a beautiful thing about this instrument is it is so nuanced and so textured and so complex, and so much beauty can be created from it that people can make an entire career, they can make an entire lifetime out of playing this instrument. Professional musicians, concert pianists, get to know this instrument deeply, intimately, and through it they're able to create with sound in a way that, that just dazzles us and, and, and challenges us and deepens us. But if you were to look into the mind of a concert pianist and you used all like the, the modern ways of imaging it, an interesting thing that you would see is how much of their brain is actually dedicated to this instrument. The ability to coordinate 10 fingers, the ability to, to work the pedal, the, the feeling of the sound, the understanding of, of music theory, all of these things are represented as different patterns and structures in the brain. And now that you have your, that thought in your mind, recognize that this beautiful pattern and structure of thought in the brain was not possible even just a couple hundred years ago because the piano was not invented until the year 1700. This beautiful pattern of thought in the brain didn't exist 5,000 years ago. And in this way, the skill of the piano, the relationship to the piano, the beauty that comes from it was not a thinkable thought until very, very recently in human history. And the invention of the piano itself was not an independent thought. It required a depth of mechanical engineering. It required the, the history of stringed instruments. It required so many patterns and structures of thought that led to the possibility of its invention and then the possibility of the mastery of its play. And it leads me to a concept I'd like to share with you guys, which I call the palette of being. Because all of us are born into this life having available to us the experiences of humanity that has come so far. And we're, we typically are only able to paint with the patterns of thought and the ways of being that existed before. So if the piano and uh, the way of playing it is a way of being, this is a way of being that didn't exist for people 5,000 years ago. It was a color in the palette of being that you couldn't paint with. Nowadays, if you're born, you can actually learn this skill. Nowadays, if you're born, you can learn to be a computer scientist, another color that was not available just a couple hundred years ago. And our lives are really beautiful for the following reason. We're born into this life. We have the ability to go make this unique painting with the colors of being that are around us at the point of our birth. But in the process of life, we also have the unique opportunity to create a new color. And that might come from the invention of a new thing, a self-driving car a piano, a computer. It might come from the way that you express yourself as a human being. It might come from a piece of artwork that you create. Each one of these ways of being, these things that we put out into the world through the creative process of mixing together all the other things that existed at the point that we were born, allow us to expand the palette of being for all of society after us. And this leads me 